This is an anime recap video, and in this video, I'm going to show you a man named Sasaki, who is a regular office worker. However, one day, he tames a reincarnated bird named Peeps and becomes overpowered with its powers. Sasaki begins his day by taking out the trash, greeted by a friendly good morning from his neighbor's little girl. Reciprocating the greeting, he heads to work by train. At his workplace, a junior requests Sasaki's input on a settlement report. After offering some improvements, Sasaki assures he'll handle the report while the junior focuses on other tasks, recognizing the need for the right person for the job. During the day, Sasaki overhears a colleague talking about her newly adopted cat, sparking his interests. The colleague shares a cat video, leaving Sasaki enamored with the adorable feline and yearning for a pet of his own. Sasaki's boss assigns him additional work, and he reflects on the average-sized company where he works, with earnings and wages falling within the average range. Despite financial struggles, Sasaki finds fulfillment in contributing to society and being a valuable asset at his workplace. Later, a junior invites Sasaki to dinner, but mindful of his tight budget, Sasaki declines, opting for a rain check. After work, Sasaki buys dinner at a convenience store where he loses a lottery for a free item. Returning home, he is greeted by the little girl from earlier. Sasaki has dinner while indulging in cat videos. The narrative shifts to Sasaki at a pet store, eyeing cats with hefty price tags. Bemoaning the financial constraints, he expresses a desire for a pet dog if circumstances allowed. However, his attention is diverted by a java sparrow whose chirps seem to say pick me. Priced at 3,000 yen, Sasaki purchases the sparrow, naming it Peeps. Feeling a connection, Sasaki brings Peeps home, finding solace as his 40th birthday approaches. Later, Sasaki contemplates a name for the sparrow. The bird introduces itself as P. Carlo, an inhabitant of another world and a star sage. Sasaki marvels at the bird's chatness, wondering if it's a common trait for its species. Despite P. Carlo's suggestion, Sasaki decides to name the sparrow peeps, even though the bird seems displeased with the choice. Sasaki finds the bird's disgruntlement cute, amazed at the normal communication he shares with a bird. Recalling advice from the pet shop owner, Jamada, about acclimating peeps to human contact. Sasaki is determined to make it happen. Curious about the sparrow's communication abilities, Sasaki engages Peeps in conversation, asking what he'd like for dinner. To Sasaki's astonishment, Peeps expresses a desire for Kobe beef shadow bond, claiming it's the best according to a man named Yamada at the shop. Struggling with the surrealness of conversing with a bird, Sasaki acknowledges the expensive nature of Shadow Bond and apologizes for his financial constraints. He suggests pork ribs as an alternative, but Peeps insists Sasaki should earn the money if he can't afford the preferred delicacy. Peeps reveals he was exiled from the other world and, embracing his new form, has decided to live life on his terms. Sasaki contemplates the truth in Peep's words, realizing the fleeting nature of life and the importance of pursuing one's desires. Acknowledging his corporate servitude, Sasaki resonates with Peep's philosophy and is willing to assist his newfound avian companion in fulfilling his goals in this world. Peeps, expressing the need for assistance from someone in this world, proposes a partnership to accumulate riches easily. Sasaki, devoted to his cute little birdie, agrees to help. Peeps seals their agreement with magic, sharing a portion of his power with Sasaki and establishing a mystical connection between them. Opening the cage, Peeps perches on Sasaki's shoulder, signaling the beginning of their collaboration. Peeps explains that Sasaki can now channel his former power through him. Suddenly, Sasaki finds himself transported to another world, Betrium, a provincial town in the kingdom of hers, Peeps' previous home. Bewildered by the sudden change in scenery, Sasaki realizes the extent of Peep's magical abilities. The scene shifts to Sasaki back at his office, where his junior questions how he arrived so early. Sasaki, concealing the otherworldly journey, attributes his timely presence to a train delay. Privately, his junior proposes the idea of starting a new business together, expressing his intention to quit their current job the next month. Recognizing Sasaki's experience as valuable, the junior suggests collaboration in their entrepreneurial venture. He offers Sasaki a better deal than his current job, prompting Sasaki to request time for consideration. Explaining his recent busyness due to personal matters, Sasaki hints at adopting a pet, surprising his junior, who finds it difficult to believe. Although Sasaki expected skepticism, he assures his junior that he is not lying. The visit to another world and his new pet, 
Peeps have brought changes and new goals into his life. Sasaki appreciates Peeps' teleportation ability, allowing him to avoid crowded trains and making his life more refreshing. Embracing Peeps' idea of interworld business, Sasaki purchases items for trading, aiming to start small with town merchants before reaching out to upper-class nobles. Winning a chocolate bar in a lottery, Sasaki returns home, where the little girl welcomes him. Hearing her hunger, Sasaki gives her the chocolate bar, stating his dislike for chocolate and winning it for free. Heading inside, he transports to the other world with his wares. Arriving at the Herman Trading Company, run by the town's nobles, Sasaki contemplates entering with peeps on his shoulder, who suggests being claimed as a familiar. Sasaki successfully sells his items for 400 gold coins, emphasizing the high prices for crafted goods in this world. Mark, the company president, inquires about the origin of the pens and paper. Sasaki, unwilling to disclose his source, compensates by committing not to sell the pen and paper to any other store. Continuing to shuttle between the two worlds for his business, he explores the unfamiliar local food of the other world. Peeps provides magical lectures, and though Sasaki attempts to learn the teleportation spell, he decides to take a slow and steady approach due to its complexity. During a break at his office the next day, Sasaki practices spell casting, successfully invoking the fire spell on his first try. However, this triggers the fire alarm, prompting Sasaki to hastily flee the scene. Over lunch, he shares the incident with Peeps, who notes Sasaki's high affinity for magic. Impressed, Peeps suggests the idea of starting an eatery, considering their frequent involvement with food. Observing a cook being dismissed from a restaurant, Sasaki engages with him, expressing interest in his story. The cook, named French, reveals that despite his rapid culinary growth, jealousy among co-workers led to false accusations of theft, resulting in his unfair dismissal. Convinced of French's potential, Sasaki proposes opening a new store together with French as the store manager. Surprised, French agrees, prompting Sasaki to arrange for an eatery. Consulting with Mark, he secures a shop and necessary supplies, establishing the eatery prominently on the town's main road. The scene transitions to Sasaki happily paying French's wages for the last month, with French expressing gratitude for the generous amount. Determined to invest his efforts into the work, French looks forward to contributing wholeheartedly. Later, during lunch with Peeps, Sasaki reveals that opening an eatery wasn't his initial plan but thought it could be useful for Peeps to experience local tastes. Considering the impracticality of Shadow Bond in this world, Sasaki aims to create dishes with a similar flavor. He also sees the eatery as a way to cut down on personal expenses. Addressing Peeps' curiosity about prospects for promotion in his home world, Sasaki admits there isn't much, and his pay has remained stagnant for the past five years. Despite practicing various magic spells, progress on the teleportation spell remains elusive. The narrative shifts to Sasaki purchasing hunting equipment, noting its rising popularity among the nobles. Peeps compares it to golf in this world, attributing his knowledge to internet research. Sasaki buys binoculars and a Swiss army knife, successfully selling them to Mark at a high price, advancing his initial plan to engage with the nobility. Later, Sasaki pays a visit to Viscount Muller, the noble governing the land. The Viscount discreetly inspects the goods, prompting Sasaki to realize the importance of being selective about his products. Viscount Muller, aware that Sasaki is from another continent, inquires about the rarity of these goods in Sasaki's homeland and whether Sasaki holds a high status. Sasaki carefully explains that he is a craftsman who ended up on this continent after a shipwreck and the goods he brought are both from his original possessions and newly crafted items. Understanding Sasaki's background, Viscount Muller proposes a beneficial arrangement. Sasaki can sell his goods to the Herman Trading Company, and Muller expresses interest in purchasing some items directly. Muller even grants Sasaki permission to enter his mansion at any time. Sasaki is tasked with reporting anything noteworthy in the town that could benefit Muller's territory. This connection with the feudal lord streamlines Sasaki's trades between the two worlds, contributing to the development of his relaxing life in another world. Reflecting on his progress with sales, learning magic, and managing his restaurant, Sasaki believes his idyllic life is taking shape. Later, at the office, Sasaki notices it's his junior's farewell party. As they enjoy food and drinks, news circulates about a random attacker on the loose. Curious about Sasaki's recent energy and determined demeanor, his junior probes him about the prospect of going independent, sensing an I-can-do-it aura around him. Sasaki contemplates the recent changes in his life, attributing his newfound energy to a better bed that allows for improved sleep. 
He muses about the spacious bed in the other world and considers alternating between the two to adapt to a more luxurious lifestyle. After attending his junior's farewell party, he heads home, where he encounters a dangerous situation. Dodging ice shards, Sasaki witnesses a man using superpowers to attack a woman. Despite an initial attempt to run away, concern for the woman's safety prompts Sasaki to intervene. He attacks the assailant with an ice shard, inadvertently freezing the man. The woman, armed with a gun, questions our office worker Sasaki about his psychic abilities and origin. Sasaki admits to using the powers recently awakened in him. The woman, surprised to be saved by a stray psychic, asks Sasaki to accompany her. She assures him she won't harm him and reveals her affiliation with an organization. Sasaki considers the possibility of meeting others from Peep's world and expresses his willingness to talk more. Before joining the woman, he seeks permission to go home first for a change of clothes, explaining his work commitments. The woman ensures the organization will handle his work. At home, our reincarnated bird, Peeps, informs Sasaki that he does not sense any strong magic from the girl's body, and believes that their powers may build on a different foundation than that of magic. He asks Sasaki to speak with her more and find more about them. After that, Peeps hide inside his bag and they leave. Before heading out, Sasaki asks the girl that if he can bring his pet bird to the organization, and the girl accepts. They then introduce each other, with the girl revealing her name is Hashizaki. The section chief apologizes for the informal meeting and introduces himself as Akatsu, Sasaki's immediate superior. Akatsu instructs Hoshizaki to return to the office and complete yesterday's report, emphasizing the need for proper procedures. Our office worker, Sasaki, is handed a new phone for official communications and emergencies. Akatsu informs Sasaki that they may contact him outside regular work hours and requests him to carry the phone at all times. While Sasaki finds the idea inconvenient, Akatsu explains the importance of being reachable, especially in emergencies. Akatsu leaves, mentioning that Sasaki can contact him anytime for assistance. Sasaki contemplates the nature of his new workplace, a peripheral government ministry shrouded in secrecy. The agency's public facade is that of police sergeants, and their existence is not disclosed to the public. Sasaki's training involves a medical exam, ID picture, and learning about the agency's operations. He realizes the necessity of secrecy due to the dangerous nature of psychic abilities. Sasaki also understands Hoshizaki's role, given the potential threats posed by psychics misusing their powers. As his training concludes, Sasaki receives a job preparation allowance of 1 million, which he plans to use for stocking up. Returning home, he met the little girl who thanked him for the chocolate with homemade cookies. The girl then asked if the woman he was with was his girlfriend, and Sasaki clarified that she was just his superior at work. Sasaki was cautious about revealing the truth due to the confidential nature of his job. Upon returning home, a reincarnated bird, Peeps, informed Sasaki that someone bugged his place while he was out. Sasaki asked if they saw him checking the internet, and Peeps reassured him that they did not. The scene cut to Sasaki disarming the camera and microphone at his house. The passage also described a phone call between Akatsu and Sasaki, where Akatsu acknowledged Sasaki's talent and apologized for the test involving the bugs. Akatsu explained that the test was to assess Sasaki's skills and loyalty to the organization. Sasaki passed the test, and Akatsu expressed the organization's need for honest and skilled individuals like Sasaki. Sasaki agreed to work for Akatsu but remained cautious. After the call, Sasaki reflected on the situation, realizing that he couldn't let his guard down around Akatsu. Peeps inquired if Sasaki planned to stock up, and Sasaki decided to do it another time, thinking that his relaxing life in another world was still a distant dream. The passage ended with Otta contemplating that Sasaki could be a person he could use effectively. Like and comment if you enjoy this video. Subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps, and tell me what anime recap you like to see next in the comments below.